हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द बोनी फीचर्स ऑफ दिस मैंडिबल नाउ व्हेन यू विल सी द मैंडिबल मैंडिबल इज हैविंग द टू मेजर पार्ट नाउ वन इज नोन इज द बॉडी ऑफ द मैंडिबल सो यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज द बॉडी ऑफ मैंडिबल एंड व्हेन यू विल सी द मैंडिबल फ्रॉम बिलो यू कैन सी दैट दिस बॉडी इज यू शेप और यू कैन से इट इज ए हॉर्स शू शेप बॉडी क्लियर नाउ बिहाइंड द बॉडी यू कैन सी दैट दीज आर द टू प्लेट्स these are known as ramus of the mandible so there is a one right ramus another is the left ramus of the mandible so what are the bony parts of the mandible so first you have to understand that there is a body of the mandible and there are two ramus of the mandible now we'll see first body of the mandible now the body of the mandible is having the external surface which is visible here and it is having the inner surface clear then you can see that it is having a border on upper side where you are having the teeth and this upper border is known as alveolar arch now this is the lower border of the body of the mandible it is known as base of the mandible clear so base means you are talking about this lower border of the body of the mandible now this body is continue posteriorly with the ramus of the mandible so this is the line of can assume that this is the ramus meeting with the body clear now what are the important features first we will see on the body of your mandible so when you will see the mandible the outer surface is showing very important landmark the first is known as symphysis menti now symphysis menti is a feature which is present anteriorly in midline now here you can see that this is a triangular projection is visible now this triangle apex is having this much portion of symphysis menti and this triangular projection is known as mental protuberance this triangle is known as mental protuberance so if you will see from the profile view if you will see the side you can see that there is an anterior projection now this projection is known as mental protuberance now this triangle when you will see the triangle now these two angles of the triangles are having the two small projections and these are known as mental tubercle so what is this center projection protuberance and what is these angle points these are the mental tubercle clear now from the mental tubercle if you will go posteriorly you will find the foramen on the external surface of the body of mandible now these are known as mental foramen which are present on both right and left side now these mental foramens are very important for the uh, assessment of the age of the mandible now this given bone is the adult age, age group because this mental foramen lies in middle of the two borders of the body if it is a mandible of old person then what will happen this alveolar process will damage it will uh, no, not there this much of uh, upper part is not there so what will happen the upper border will lies here and in that condition the mental foramen is near the upper border in old ages but in case of the child this mental foramen is near the lower border so mental foramen is very important medico legal importance to identify the age group of the mandible so this is what you have to first understand on the external surface now on the external surface if you will see in this view you can see there is a oblique line is visible now where is the oblique line you can see if you will trace this anterior border now from this a line is coming downward now this line may be longer in some mandible or may be shorter in some mandible now this line is known as oblique line of the external surface of mandible and this line is very important which is present here on the external surface of mandible clear so what are the features i just told you we will revise in the midline anteriorly you will have the symphysis menti below the symphysis menti this is known as mental protuberance the angle of the this triangle is having the tubercles which are mental tubercles then you will have the mental foramina and here you will have the oblique line now apart from that anteriorly below the incisive teeth you will have this depression on both the side this is known as incisive fossa clear what is that incisive fossa now we'll move to the inner side features of the mandible now when you will rotate the mandible and if you will see on the inner side of the body part of the mandible the first and most important thing is you will find a prominent line 
Now this prominent line which is visible here is known as mylohyoid line. Now this mylohyoid line divide this inner surface into the two part. This lower part is known as submandibular fossa and this upper part is known as sublingual fossa. So this is a very commonly asked question in your exam. What is mylohyoid line? So mylohyoid line is a feature on the inner side of your body of mandible. Below that you have submandibular fossa, above you have sublingual fossa. Then on the inner side of the anterior part of the mandible, here you are having the four spinous tubercle which are known as genial tubercle. So there are superior and inferior genial tubercle and these tubercles are four in number. So two superior tubercle and two inferior genial tubercle. Now when you will see the border, I already told you that upper border is known as alveolar process which lodges the teeth and the lower border is known as base. Now there is a very important feature is seen on the anterior part of the base or anterior border. Now here you can see there are two depressions. Now these depressions are known as digastric fossa. So where is the digastric fossa? Now these are the two digastric fossas which are present on the base. So if you will see the mandible in such position, you will find that this is the two impression, one on this right side, one in on the right, left side of the midline. So these depressions are known as digastric fossa. Then we'll move to the features of the ramus of mandible. So when you will see the ramus of the mandible, the ramus is a quadrangular plate. Now here you can see that this is the ramus. Now this ramus is having the anterior border. Now upper part of the border is free, but this lower part is making a connection with, with the body. Then this is the upper border. Now this upper border is having a notch. Now this upper border notch is known as mandibular notch. What is that? Mandibular notch. Now this is the posterior border of the ramus and this is the inferior border of the ramus. This inferior border anteriorly continue with the base and posteriorly this meeting point of the base or lower border with the posterior border is marked as a angle of mandible. This is known as angle of mandible. Now when you will trace the anterior border in upper side, you will find a projection. Now this projection is known as coronoid process. What is that? It is known as coronoid process. So on both the side, you can see that this is the coronoid process of the right side and this is the coronoid process of the left side. Now on the upper part of the posterior border here you can see that there is a, a process again and this is known as condylar process. Now this condylar process is going to make joint with the mandibular fossa of temporal bone which is known as temporomandibular joint. So this is your condylar process. This anterior one is known as coronoid process and this U-shaped gap between the two process is known as mandibular notch clear now there are very important features present on the inner side of the ramus now when you will see the inside of the ramus you will find there is a very big foramen is present so i am passing this probe into this foramen and this is known as mandibular foramen now you can see that as i am pressing this uh, black color wire it is going more deeper and deeper so this is the foramen and this foramen inside continue with the canal. So this is known as mandibular foramen and this foramen continue as a mandibular canal. Now on the initial part of this foramen you are able to see a bony projection. Now this bony projection which is visible here now this bony small spine is known as lingula. So it is very important to keep in mind that lingula is a very small bony spine which is present at the entry of this foramen which is known as mandibular foramen. So you can see that mandibular foramen is present on this side also here it is visible and here you can see this black color probe inside the foramen and just at the entry of this foramen you will find a small bony projection is known as lingula. Clear? Now apart from this what you are going to see is the mylohyoid groove. Now where is the mylohyoid groove? Now when you will come below this uh, mandibular foramen, now there is a small depression is visible. 
now this depression is known as mylohyoid groove clear so mylohyoid groove is a different thing and mylohyoid line is a different thing so this is the mylohyoid line and this is your mylohyoid groove clear so again i will repeat what are the important things which we have discussed so there is a one more important feature on the uh, condylar process now when you will see the condylar process this condylar process is having head and neck now this is the head of the condylar process now this head is connected with the uh, ramus by a constricted area and this constricted area is known as neck of the condylar process now when you will see the condylar process on anterior part of the condylar process there is a small depression is present now this depression on the anterior surface of both the condylar processes is known as pterygoid fovea what is that pterygoid fovea so this is the pterygoid fovea on this side and this is the position of pterygoid fovea on this side but here my dear friends you have to keep this thing in mind that pterygoid fovea is a feature of the anterior surface of the neck of condylar process clear so when you will see the condylar process this upper part is known as head which is going to make a joint and just below the head this depression on the neck of mandible is known as pterygoid fovea so now in nutshell i am again repeating all the bony features one by one first when you will see from the front what you have to understand this is symphysis menti this is mental protuberance these are the mental tubercle then this is mental foramen this is the incisive fossa then you will have the oblique line then you will have the uh, coronoid process then you will have condylar process then you will have the notch that is known as mandibular notch then you will come on the inner side of the mandible on inner side of the mandible first you will find anteriorly the superior inferior genial tubercle then below on the base you will have the right and left digastric fossa then on the inner side of the body you will have this mylohyoid line below the mylohyoid line you have the submandibular fossa above you will have the sublingual fossa then on posterior side you will have this mylohyoid groove then you will have this mandibular foramen and this small bony projection is known as lingula clear now this point is known as angle of the mandible and there is a one important thing that whenever you are holding this bone sometimes the question has been asked that it is ossified in which manner so answer is that it is a membranous as well as endochondral so it is a, a by ossification it is a membrano cartilaginous in origin clear so these are the bony features of the mandible thank you